Hello golfers, welcome back to another edition of the Swing Report. Today we're taking a look at the new Milled Grind 3 wedges from TaylorMade. If you'd like to hear our final thoughts on this wedge, just skip to the, to the end of this video in the final chapter. But before you do that, please remember to like, subscribe, and comment on our channel. And now, the Milled Grind 3 wedges from TaylorMade. We have got the TaylorMade Milled Grind 3 wedges in hand. Thomas, these are some, some beautiful new offerings from TaylorMade. First off, when, when we look at the technology with a wedge like this, really it seems like the emphasis is on sharper, deeper grooves to increase more spin for the golfer. I mean, that's just it. With wedges in your hand, you want to know what the ball is going to do. And to generate spin, we need to have good, clean, solid grooves. I know with these, the they are a lot sharper and deeper than the previous models. They also have this raised micro ribs here on the sole as well, which really does help increase spin additionally and make for much better contact coming through the ball as well. So along with that micro rib, we also have just raw face technology. Now this is what TaylorMade claims is a, a better face than ever, more spin, more control, more precision, along with, as the name suggests, a milled grind. So when you're talking about a milled wedge, you're talking about more precision, and accuracy for every golfer. Yeah, and with them being milled, they're gonna feel soft off the face. Yep. The feel is gonna be incredible off the club face. I can just even kind of feel when I'm putting my, my finger on here in, in spots, so I just feel like it's nice and soft, and I feel like I'm gonna get that feedback that I want out of a wedge, because feel really is feedback, and you wanna be able to control your ball flight, wanna control your distance, you're gonna do that with these wedges. Absolutely. In terms of a stock shaft, we're talking about the True Temper Dynamic Gold S200 steel shaft for this TaylorMade Milled Grind 3 wedge. I do wanna to touch a little bit on what they're offering with regards to bounces. So we do still have your low bounce, standard bounce, high bounce, and I believe there's like a Tiger Grind yep. now with these wedges too. Yep, there's, there's a little more bounce on the leading edge and then more heel relief, which that's just the way Tiger likes it. He wants to be able to have bounce going through the ball, but also be able to open it up and hit that flop shot. Yeah, so for golfers that don't know what the bounce is designed for, so for players that may have a steeper attack angle or play on softer turf conditions, a little bit more bounce is your friend. And then for those golfers that play on firmer conditions all year round, the lower bounce options are always going to be better offer for you. Sounds good. Well, let's see how they perform right here. Let's do it. All right, Thomas, you're set up about 100 yards out. But when first, before you start hitting, when you look down at this club, I think one thing we both noticed was there's really that kind of pronounced sort of, sort of semi-high toe look. Right, it's, we were trying to like figure out where it kind of fits in with regards to the wedge market. And it's, it's not like it's, it's a little larger than a Volky, but maybe a little smaller than say like a, a Glide 3.0 or something sure. that is. It's kind of like in between. So it's gonna have a little bit, a little bit of forgiveness to it, but it's also gonna be very appealing on the eye to those players. All right, let's see how it performs. All right, so we got uh, a couple yardages here. I just shot here around about 95 to 100 yards away. I have the 56 degree. It's a little right. Got nice and crisp. Looks like kind of like kind of the one hop and, and stop exactly. with, with that wedge there. That's what you're looking for. It had to be pretty close to about 100 yards. That was 102.8. 102.8. Carry. Height of 72 feet. How about the spin? Our spin rate was just over, t it's 10,400. That's, yeah, that's a decent amount of spin. And this is like about a 1030 swing for me when I'm hitting at about 100 yards. Okay. Which is good to see that the ball is spinning a lot, even though I'm trying to take a little distance off. Definitely. Yep, too once again, just uh, kind of that one hop and then stop, which is exactly what I like to see with my wedge game. Definitely. I feel pretty good too. Feels, feels nice and soft. Solid turf interaction. Solid turf interaction, yep. And I'm using this standard bounce wedge here. It's got 12 okay. degrees of bounce on the 56. I'm, I'm definitely not a digger when I'm hitting my, hitting my wedge shots. Just a little bit of turf interaction. I need to go a little bit. Yeah, not bad, actually. Still carried pretty solid. Yep. 101.6. I like that consistency. It's 
probably just just a little further, but once again, stopped pretty quickly for me. Yep, sailed on you a bit, 104.5, but still pretty darn good. Yeah, well that that flag, I believe, is 102 yards okay. from when I when, when I shot. So we're talking about an eight footer still. We're still, yeah, we're talking it's not that far away. Very makeable. Yeah, I think all those five shots that I've hit so far, I have a good chance there to to make my birdie or get up and down from 100 yards away. That might be pretty good. It's scaring it. Ah, just a little short. That was right in the jaws. Yeah, they, they feel pretty good. I'm not gonna lie, it, it feels pretty, pretty good off the face. I like the spin control you get out of, out of these wedges. We know the grooves are nice and sharp. Make sure you do clean your grooves, grooves so that's Definitely. really important. But um, very, very consistent off the face. I mean, I have six legitimate chances Results there to, to speak for to themselves make, to make birdie. So I like them. Great to hear. Well, Thomas, your ball must have deflected off a tree because you found yourself in a bunker. Clearly, some bad luck has struck you. But uh, you've got the, the black finish in your hands, I see. Yeah, so the sun's finally starting to peek its way out here. It's coming through the uh, the smoke from the wildfires that we've had. Um, so the nice thing with the satin roar black finish is it's going to be a little anti-glare. So you're not going to see as much glare if you're not wearing sunglasses. I don't have sunglasses on. I don't play. So I like to see a wedge that just doesn't have as much of a chrome shiny finish to it. Okay. So let's hit some shots with it. I got the 58 degree. Uh, this is the standard bounce with a standard bounce with 11 degrees okay. of bounce on it. Pretty good. Very they would have got that one up and down. I, I'll give it to you. <laughs> Maybe not that one. It actually wasn't too bad. Sit. Yeah, a little bit thin on that one. Got away with it though. Yeah, spin control, not bad. Yep. There we go. Ah. That might be close. Pretty good. Pretty darn good. Feels pretty good, yeah. Uh, so this wedge here, the sole's relatively thin in the standard bounce with 11 degrees. Out of the sand, I mentioned uh, with wedge game, you want to get the right dialed in bounce. So with the tailor-made mill grind free wedges, as I mentioned, there's different grinds and different bounces. If you're playing in really soft sand, you want to definitely opt for the higher bounce, okay. especially if you, if you have a lot of, lot of white soft sand. If you don't have much sand in your bunkers or the sand's nice and firm, you want to opt for a little bit less bounce. Okay. So this, when I was hitting this, the standard bounce, it felt pretty good, knowing that there's a little bit of sand under here, but there's not a lot of sand. It's pretty compact, so it felt pretty good, especially that bounce at impact. I felt like the club was kind of bouncing, the ball was basically just being picked up in the air as the club was going underneath the sure. ball. So great options here by, uh, by TaylorMade with these mill grind wedges. Terrific insight. Well, Thomas, we've got a pretty straightforward chip shot for you here from a tight lie. What do you really ask from a wedge in a scenario like this? Well, bounce is your friend. For me, I want to make sure that as I'm coming through that I want that bounce to be affected. That leading edge on the, on the wedge, I want to make sure is nice and crisp at impact. I don't want to catch it thin. I don't want to catch it chunky either. Okay. I'm just trying for good contact and picking a nice spot on the green and have it roll out towards the hole. So let's hit some shots with the 58 and the 56. I'm going to start with the 58 first. Okay. 58, I'd fly a little bit further, and the 56, maybe I'd have it roll out to the, the hole a little bit more. Sounds good. Check a couple of times and then release out. Yep. Feels nice and soft off the face. One, two, check, and then release. Yeah, it, it really looks pretty good down looking down at. It, uh, it visually looks appealing, not really much offset or anything like that. It's sure. just a very, very clean, clean look. All right, well, I came up just short three times yep. with the 58. Let's switch to the 56 where the ball rolls just a little bit more. It's more the shot that I'm, I like to play around the green. A little bit more top spin on that one. Yep. Landed a little shorter. Yeah, I mean, this is this is some tight grass right here, but really it's just 
cleanly going through the turf. This one might release a little bit more. Yeah, as you mentioned, I think it's so critical to note that you were able to open the face and really make clean contact out of the bunker. And at the same time now, you're hitting more kind of low, closed off, sort of low running shots, just showing that versatility. Yeah, versatility is important in a wedge. You don't want to be really, you don't want to be one dimensional at all. You want to give yourself options. So when I'm hitting this shot, I got the ball positioned a little bit further back in my stance. That might be pretty good. Break. Ball got in the way. The people at home know that was that was going in. <laughs> it was going to be close. Nice. I think I would at least probably give myself five or six of those up and down. Definitely. Yeah. Those are bottom of the cup. Yeah, the wedge feels really good off the club face. It's nice and soft. There's definitely a lot of feedback that you get out of the wedges. Um, I'm intrigued by the sole here because I feel like as, as I'm going through the turf, it's just nice, clean, and crisp. Yep. Thomas, you've had a chance to hit approach shots, bunker shots, and chip shots with the TaylorMade Milled Grind 3 wedges. Really what jumps out to you about how these wedges performed? I mean, the feel is really good. It's really soft off the club face. Uh, not clicky at all, just nice, soft, forged feel off the face, and that's really important, especially around the green, because you want to know what the ball is going to do every single time. The other thing that also jumps out to me here, too, is I also had the chance to hit the chrome and also the black finish. Yep. I'm looking at the black finish now after I've hit a few shots, and I'm not seeing any of those white wear marks that sometimes you would see on a black finish. So that's always to be still tested long term to see if uh, you start seeing those white marks. But initially, so far, of the shots that I've hit, I'm not seeing any wear marks that would look like the club's wearing faster than, say, a chrome. We know it's not. It just looks like it visually does a little with the black sure. finishes. Um, so, yeah, that's really good. I'm looking at it here. And the way that the transition from the black to more like a, a satin face and then the black again, I think that helps a lot there, okay. too. And it looks still looks like a mint wedge looking down at it. Okay. Thomas, the, the TaylorMade R&D team has really put a lot of work into the raw face technology which promises more spin and precision. As a better player, did you get that, that sense that this club has a lot of spin control and precision kind of under the hood? Yeah, well, I mean, when I was hitting a 1030 swing with my 56 degree, I was still getting 10,000 RPMs of spin. And that, for me, is really important to pay attention to because if your wedge is not spinning enough, maybe you need new grooves, new wedges, definitely it's gonna affect the stoppability on the green but it's also going to give inconsistencies at time. You might have one that flies five yards further or five yards shorter. Equivalent of that, that's going to turn into maybe a 25-footer foot versus maybe a four-footer, and you're going to make more putts if your wedge is close. So, yeah, I would say R&D, they're on top of it here. Definitely notice a decent amount of spin off the wedges. Finally, when you look at the technology, when you look at the performance, who would you say this wedge is for? So this wedge is for, it's really kind of all-round. I would say... Your better player through kind of your, your kind of your, your mid handicap for sure. Okay. Now, as I mentioned, there's different bounces and different grinds, so that's the important thing to pay attention to. That's why you've got so much versatility with with this with this model. So it really is for most golfers. Those higher handicap golfers may opt for a little bit more bounce, so more of the higher bounce wedges. Those lower handicap golfers that want maybe a little bit more workability around the green, maybe ability to open and close the club face a little bit. We'll probably opt for the lower bounce options in these wedges. And then so there's that tiger grind as well. So it really is for professional golfers kind of all the way up to your higher handicap golfers. So a wide range. Well, you heard it from the expert himself. If you want to pick up one of these wedges, shop online at secondswing.com or go to your local Second Swing retailer. He's Thomas Campbell. My name is Michael Geiger. Thank you for watching.